Hello and greetings. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Well-Tempered Clavier Book 2 and how Bach organized the tempos and the durations. This comes from my uh, book in progress, Discovering Bach's Secret Tempo Code. And uh, you can read more about this on my website if you are interested. Okay, so let's start here with the Prelude in Fugue in C Major. So we have uh, a 3-2 duration ratio here, 3 minutes and 2 minutes. Prelude and Fugue in C minor, it's sort of the opposite here, a 2-3 duration ratio at about a little over 1.5 minutes and 2 minutes and 20 seconds. That's a 2 minute, or that's a 2 to 3 duration ratio here with no margin of error. If you're interested in how Bach achieved these, you might want to go and read these little descriptions here. That will give you an idea of how Bach was able to do that. Basically, it was the way that he combined the numbers of measures with the tempo to produce a duration. So prelude and fugue in C sharp major. The prelude the divides as three to one. And uh, that is a minute and a half and 30 minutes here. And then that, or seconds, I'm sorry, a, a minute and 30 seconds and 30 seconds. And that adds to two minutes and the fugue takes three minutes. So we have a two to three duration ratio for the prelude and fugue in C sharp major. Prelude and fugue in C sharp minor. Uh, Bach created a three two duration ratio here at four and a half minutes and three minutes. In fact, if you look at the actual durations here, he hit it right on the spot, actually, precisely. And I'm just rounding these off. I'm rounding 425 off to 430 and 257 off to 3, and that makes a 3-2 duration ratio. Going to Prelude and Fugue in D major, this is an easy 1-1 one, one duration ratio. You have both pieces lasting virtually the same amount of time. You have uh, 306 for the prelude with no repeats and about 310 for the fugue. Of course, with repeats, this would last two, two times longer, which would be a 2-1 duration ratio. Prelude and fugue in D minor. You can see here that we have two durations we have a little over two minutes, two minutes and 10 seconds. And then for the fugue, two minutes and 15 seconds. They're both virtually equal. And it is, uh, we can postulate the, the number of measures that Bach planned for by sort of working backwards. So uh, he planned, well, he didn't plan 26.14 measures, but I'm just putting that there because at 26.14 measures, it, it makes this movement exactly the same duration as this movement. So Bach couldn't have done that, but he got really, really close, actually. 2 minutes and 10 seconds, 2 minutes and 15 seconds for the few. And by the way, these are all the natural tempos for the particular time signature and the style that's being played. Prelude and Fugue in E-flat major. We have a three minutes for the prelude, two minutes for the fugue, a three to two duration ratio. By the way, look at the tempos here, 72 and 72. So we have the dotted quarter of the prelude equals the half note of the fugue. And look at his numbers of measures. You see what he was trying to do? He was trying to hit the same number of measures so that three beats in a measure, nine eight has three beats in a measure, not nine in this case. So it has three beats at dotted quarter 72, and the fugue has two beats of 72. So that naturally creates a three to two duration ratio right here. I think if in any work, it is in this work that it's patently obvious what Bach's intentions were here by simply looking at the numbers of measures he wrote and the tempo that he planned and the resulting duration here, or duration ratio. Prelude and Fugue in D-sharp minor, a one to two duration ratio here, two minutes and four minutes. He was about 10 seconds off, or two measures off, for the Fugue. 
So I believe that Bach planned two more measures for the fugue, 48, and he attained 46. So the actual duration is 3 minutes and 50 seconds, but Bach planned that to be in even 4 minutes, so it would be 2 minutes longer, and the prelude, a nice 1 to 2 duration ratio. Prelude and fugue in E major. We see here that the prelude lasts 215, the fugue lasts 335. Round these off just slightly, round off 215 to 220, 335 to 330, and you have an easy 2 to 3 duration ratio here. And look at the numbers of measures, 56 to 42. Do a little calculation and figure out uh, what the, the ratio is between those, and that might give you a clue as to Bach's intentions. Prelude and Fugue in E minor. Well, it's pretty much the same. Look at that. Wow. Well, Prelude and Fugue in E major that we just covered has 220 and 330, 2 to 3 ratio. Well, Prelude and Fugue in E minor, same thing, 220, 330, 2 to 3 duration ratio here. But it's a different number of measures and different tempos. But look, they're the same tempos here. But you can see that these tempos, 48 and 48, are the same. 72, that's related. So Prelude and Fugue in E major and E minor have a lot in common. They have the same durations and the same duration ratio. Prelude and Fugue in F major. Well, the prelude lasts in even four minutes, and the fugue lasts uh, in almost an even two minutes here. So we have two minutes and four minutes. We have a two to one duration ratio here. This means that Bach most likely planned 96 measures for the fugue, but went three over uh, unintentionally. Well, he had, he had to finish the fugue somehow. So when he planned it, he planned 96 and he hit 99 in actuality. So the fugue really lasts a little over two minutes. The, the prelude lasts four minutes. Two to one duration ratio, four minutes, two minutes. Prelude and fugue in F minor, three minutes and two minutes. He was just two measures off in the prelude. I think that he planned 72 measures in the prelude. And I believe he planned 84 measures in the fugue. And he, he went over by two in the prelude and he went under by one in the fugue. Because had he hit those numbers of measures here, he would have achieved a perfect three, two, duration ratio here, three minutes and two minutes. Prelude and fugue in F-sharp major. Well, we see the prelude lasts four minutes and 10 seconds. The fugue lasts two minutes and 40 seconds. You see that four minutes and 240 are a three, two duration ratio. This means that Bach most likely planned 72 measures for the prelude in order to achieve four minutes but he, he hit 75 instead in actuality. And so in actual practice, we have four minutes and 10 seconds. But you can see here that Bach planned four, so we have four minutes, 240, a nice three, two duration ratio. Prelude and fugue in F sharp minor. So we have uh, the prelude last three minutes and four seconds. The fugue lasts 5 minutes and 50 seconds. You can see that we can round that off to 3. We can round that off to 6, which means Bach most likely planned 42 measures for the prelude to achieve 3 minutes. And he most likely planned 72 measures for the fugue to achieve 6 minutes here. But in actuality, he went 1 over in the prelude and he went 2 under in the fugue, but it all averages out here to a one-two duration ratio of three minutes and six minutes. Prelude and fugue in G major. So we have, uh, actually, let's skip that one. Let's skip that one. That's, that's BWV 902. That was like the precursor to or one, one of the precursors to, to this one here. So if we look at Prelude and Fugue in G major, and, and it's completed form, we 
we have the prelude consists of 48 measures, fugue is 72 measures. When played at these tempos, the natural tempos for the particular work, each movement lasts two minutes long. And then in order to compare that, there was an early version of the prelude. Oh, it, was, it was actually a different prelude. So he took this fugue in 3-8, and it was shorter. So that appears here in the prelude and fugue in G major, EWV 902. So this was composed about eight measures before, or eight years before that one. This fugue was a precursor to that fugue. It's the same thing, but he added more. And then this pre he cut he paired it with another prelude that he did not put in the well-tempered clavier. So if you look at these tempos, these natural tempos lead to a 2-3 duration ratio here. So that confirms this tempo for that one. That's why I'm using this tempo, because we use that tempo for the, the one composed about eight years previously. So you see a nice one-to-one -one duration ratio at two minutes. Prelude and Fugue in G minor. Well, the natural tempo for the prelude, it's marked Largo, a very slow prelude. Eighth note is 63, it lasts two minutes and 40 seconds. The fugue at its tempo lasts four minutes. We have a nice two to three duration ratio here of two minutes and 40 seconds and four minutes. Now here's another case of a precursor. If you look at Prelude and Fugue in A flat major, the fugue in A flat major had a precursor about eight years prior to that, and it was called the Fugetta, Prelude and Fugetta in F major, BWV 901. So in this particular pair, Bach took, he composed this prelude and this fugetta, and he gave them an equal number of beats. The beats are equal, and also the eighth note speed is equal to, to each. So eighth note is 108, quarter is 54, that's the same as eighth note is 108, so they're equal in eighth note values. And that naturally results in exactly the same duration. So it's a 1-1 duration ratio here. So now we take this tempo from the Fugetta. And th these are the best tempos for this. So we, we take that tempo 54, assign that to that, to the finished fugue. So what Bach did here is he took this Fugetta, he transposed it into A flat major from F major, and he added a whole bunch of measures to make it 50 instead of 24. So he expanded it by uh, over half. And so as assigning this tempo to this fugue results in this duration, 342. Well, played just a tad faster, the prelude lasts three minutes and 40 seconds. So it's only two seconds off, so we have a 1-1 one, one duration ratio at 340, and then this tempo is supported by that tempo there. So if this, then that. So you, you have to go to the precursor tempo uh, because it, it's not likely that Bach changed the tempo here. It's likely that he kept it the same, and then he planned the number of measures for this prelude based on how long this one lasted at that tempo. All right, so that's a little complicated, but we got that one. Prelude and Fugue in G-sharp minor. Well, the Prelude lasts 310, the Fugue lasts about 557. If we round that off to three, we'll round that off to six, we have a nice one to two duration ratio at three minutes and six minutes. This means that Bach most likely planned 48 measures for the Prelude but achieved 50 in actual practice. Also for the fugue, Bach most likely planned 144 measures for the fugue, but he attained 143. So he was just one measure off there from achieving a nice uh, three to six, one to two duration ratio here. Prelude and fugue in A major. Well, 
prelude, a little over two minutes, fugue, a little over two minutes. That's that's a pretty much a no-brainer. <laughs> those those are a one one to one duration ratio. And you can tell that in his original plan, Bach most likely planned 32 measures for the prelude and 28 measures for the fugue to attain an even two minutes for both. Prelude and fugue in A minor. Three minutes and two seconds for the prelude, two minutes and four seconds for the fugue. Round that off to three minutes, round that off to two minutes. We have a three to two duration ratio here. This means that Bach most likely planned, well, he didn't plan 31.5 measures, but that's the number of measures that at this tempo, that this lasts exactly three minutes. So he actually hit the proper number of measures here, but in actual practice, it, it leads to just a couple seconds over three minutes. And then the fugue, I think Bach planned 27 measures because at that tempo, or at this tempo, with this number of measures, it lasts two minutes. You have a nice three to two duration ratio here for prelude and fugue in A minor. Prelude and fugue in B flat major. The prelude lasts four minutes and eight seconds, and the fugue lasts two minutes and 35 seconds. This, of course, is without repeats. Actually, I forgot to put no repeats there, because this prelude has repeats. It's a very long prelude. With repeats, it would be about eight minutes long. And then, but usually Bach planned these, he planned his durations and his tempos not considering repeats. So not considering the repeats for the prelude. Uh, this tempo here, with this number of measures, lasts a little over four minutes, four minutes and eight seconds. At this number of measures at this tempo, the fugue lasts two minutes and 35 seconds. So you can see a, a three to two duration ratio of four minutes and two minutes and 40 seconds here, which leads me to conclude that Bach probably planned 84 measures for the prelude to hit four minutes, and he probably planned 96 measures for the fugue to hit two minutes and 40 seconds which is one third shorter than that and creates a three to duration ratio of four minutes and two minutes and 40 seconds. Prelude and fugue in B flat minor. Well, we have uh, this number of measures, this tempo leads to three minutes and four seconds. And this number of measures at this tempo leads to that duration, six, 618. These are kind of odd durations. But you can see, you can easily see that there is a one to two duration ratio here. So keeping 304, I'm not going to round this one off because it, it shows Bach's ability to do this without rounding them off. So you take the, the duration of the prelude at its tempo, and then you double that, you get like 608. So in order to hit this duration, Bach had to hit 98 measures, or 98.36 to be precise. So I believe in, I believe that Bach most likely had, the original plan was to hit three minutes and six minutes for a one to two duration ratio. But after composing the prelude and getting one measure short, then he likewise intentionally <laughs> tried to be a little short on the fugue, which he actually did. Uh, he, no, actually he went a little over. He went 101 measures, but he was aiming, I think, for 98 measures in order to attain a perfect one to two duration ratio. Prelude and Fugue in B major. We see here this number of measures, this tempo lasts two minutes and 33 seconds. You can round that off to 230. This number of measures, this tempo, results in four minutes and 57 seconds, round off to five. So you see a one to two duration ratio at two and a half minutes and five minutes. Very low margins of error here. So I believe that in planning this work, Bach planned 45 measures for the prelude 
and 105 measures for the fugue, but instead he went one over. Uh, he went one over in the prelude 46, and he went one under in the fugue 104. But it all averages out to two and a half minutes and five minutes, one to two duration ratio. And last but not least, the prelude and fugue in B minor. At uh, this number of measures and this tempo, it lasts two minutes and five seconds. This number of measures at this tempo, it lasts two minutes and five seconds. So we see an exact one-to-one -one duration ratio here with only a 0.6% margin of error. It's virtually exact. Look at the numbers of measures. This should, this should raise a red flag right here. 66 measures, 100 measures. Do you see a perfect two to three duration ratio here? So whenever you see numbers of measures like this relating in a precise ratio or a near precise ratio, that's a red flag that Bach was up to something. He was trying to do something here because those, that doesn't happen by itself. He planned that. And so in planning these numbers of measures at these particular time signatures with these particular tempos, they last exactly the same amount of time, just a little over two minutes here. That it's really, really astonishing what, what Bach was able to do here with the durations. So that concludes the Well-Tempered Clavier Book 2. Uh, you are welcome to read more about that on the website. So thank you for joining me and stay tuned for more videos like this in this series.